back. This is Jenny from Polly's Paper Studio. You are watching day seven of our 13 days of Halloween series. If you're just joining in, I will leave links in the description for the first six days so you can catch up. And if you're new around here, welcome. I hope you decide to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can stay caught up with all of our newest content. So for today, I'm creating for authentic papers and this is a, a very vintagey Halloween decor frame created with the Twilight collection, which is beautiful and I love it so much. So stick with me and we will make this together. When I started, this was your basic discount store frame and it was this color, natural wood, not having any finish on it at all. Um, I painted it black with a primer paste because I wanted it to be very flat black. And then I've added some chipboard embellishments to give it some accent um, and some silver metallic paste. Now I considered adding that as part of this video, but I think that it deserves to be its own. So if you guys are interested in seeing how to alter these kind of dollar store frames, just let me know in the comments. I can definitely add that to our playlist for this 13 days series. So I'm just going to start with sharing that this is already finished and I'm going to begin adding in my paper layers. I'm using the Authentique Twilight Collection. I've just brought down the 8x8 paper pad so you can see how great and vintagey these uh, gorgeous images are and the paper patterns are amazing and I love it so much. So I'm using a combination of this 8x8 paper pad as well as um, the 12 by 12 for my focal image. Now I decided that I wanted to remove the glass from this frame just so that it would not um, be as heavy and also I thought it would be easier to glue on to a not shiny surface. So I went ahead and clipped out some cardboard that was the same dimension as the glass and this is important because if you don't replace that space in the frame where the back holders are um, it will not sit well in the frame space and it'll move around and you want everything to be nice and snug so that it stays secure so i'm going to add my pattern paper and that's that really cute little very small petite bat pattern on orange and this is really good as a background because it's such a small pattern that parts of it will show around the added layers and you'll still see the full bat images. So I've got that adhered to my cardboard layer and I want to just add one more section which is this stripe. Not a lot of this shows because of all the layers we'll put on top, but it does peek through just a little bit. So that's a extra fun little layer. Now I'm going to secure this in the back and I'm just um, using that natural lip that came in the frame itself to hold it in place. And then keeping the back that came in the frame with its support so that you can use this independently and it will stand up just fine. Okay, so you see how that is nice and tight to the lip because we added that extra spacer. I've got a tag here and I just cut this from this scrap that I cut off of this bat piece and I wanted to make sure to add um, a second lighter pattern so that it would be obvious instead of just um, all of the darker colors running together. So this has just got a um, small eyelet and a little bit of waxed twine through it just as a detail. So I went ahead and dyed some cheesecloth. This is really easy to do. I just um, used my craft mat and splooged on some spice marmalade distress ink and then used a little bit of water to dilute it and then I used my um, fingers which is why they're still a little bit orange um, to 
drag that cheesecloth through the ink until I got it well saturated and the color was pretty even and then I left it to dry for um, maybe half an hour and then I was able to kind of tatter up the edges just a little bit. You don't want to pull it totally apart um, but you can add a little bit of vintage-ness to it by not having a perfect edge. I think the best way to adhere this is kind of position it where I think I like to see um, parts of it will hang out around the next layer. So I'm just going to sort of position that and then come back in with a little bit of hot glue and tack it into place so that it won't move. That way I won't run the risk of having too much on one side and not enough on the other. This is meant to add a nice amount of texture as well as break up those darker patterns. For my next layer, I have this beautiful frame. Now I have finished this was just chipboard from Gypsy Soul Laser Cuts, and I gave it the same treatment that the frame got. So I put that black paste on so that it would be nice and flat. It was very richly pigmented, so it's really well and truly covered. Um, and then I put that silver metallic paste wax on top and I just gave special um, thought to the edges where it would add up naturally um, and wear off in the center. So here is this frame and I am going to add this right in the middle. Let's pull a little bit of that cheesecloth out now. I'm glad I didn't tack it down you know, permanently so it can just move around a little bit. And I I know that it will um, overlap these edges, so when I push it down in the middle, it will be fine and all of the delicate sides will be supported. This is another good job for glue that is hot because it's going to go through all of those layers of that fibrous cheesecloth. I don't think a regular wet adhesive would work for this, and I am not concerned about those glue strings just yet because the coming layers are going to cover that. So here is the center of our focal point, and it matches that frame really well. I've taken a, another pattern from that 8x8 eight eight paper pad. This one has those cute spiders and webs. And I put a little foam on here and I'm not going to trust that foam to secure this to the fibrous material underneath. I'm going to add more of the hot glue. And that just kind of hides the center and gives me a neutral background for my focal image. That spacer is important because it's going to help level off the top of this piece of paper and give me a nice surface for adding my focal image, which is this charming little witch girl. Um, it was part of the journal card cut aparts and I just clipped it out leaving a small border all the way around so that it looked like more of an ephemera piece rather than a fussy cut image um, and then I also put more of that foam on the back so we're building up these layers and adding a lot of dimension so she's just going to go right in the middle and she is the main focal point here I've got a couple of numbers and I just want to set these in place. These are just some um, chipboard numbers that I had in my stash. You could easily uh, substitute die cut numbers or even if you have a Cricut, you can cut them out with that and just maybe stack up your layers so that you can get a nice thick chunky piece and see how I'm sort of positioning that. I don't want to um, cover that little cat because it's really super adorable. Um, you should consider either using hot glue or I'm just going to use this Tombow um, because this is paper to paper and I think that will be uh, perfectly fine even though this is a little bit of a heavier piece. I think it will stay in place very well. So that's just going here. This is going to dry clear. 
so you don't have to worry if you have to move it around a little bit to position it. It's not going to show. And then here's the one. I was lucky in that these came in this color, but um, it would be fun to substitute something with a glittery surface as well. That would be um, an extra little bit of detail. I've got my regular flower arrangements here and I've showed on and I showed on day four how I kind of arrange these off project and assemble them so that I can move them around and get them positioned just exactly how I like them. For these I've added some uh, glitter stars that are a bit larger just as an accent and then a couple of these uh, berry picks from the craft store. I've just taken off of the top part so that I can wind the stems together so they will stay in that position and then I glued them onto the back and that just kind of helps to create that curve that I wanted with my flowers. So I can add this here and I've got black foliage again um, and the stamens which are from Really Reasonable Ribbon um, and that helps to tie in those holiday colors for this vintagey project. And I'm gonna glue that as one solid piece. I love how you can adapt some kind of like card making inspired design into a home decor piece. This is just perfect to set out with your holiday festivities. Um, one more smaller arrangement. This has the same elements but fewer of them and I didn't include a white flower because I'm kind of balancing the color from that chipboard. So this is going to go right here. I'm being careful not to cover too much of the detail that I added to the frame. So I'll just press that in. Now remember we've got that backing on already so there's no concern that this is going to pop out of the back. And then last but not least, this fabulous large glittery spider from the craft store. Um, and I think I just want to place that right here so it doesn't overhang the edge of the outside of the frame and that way all its little leggy parts will be supported. This is going to take a really big glob of glue to get that melted through the glitter that's on the plastic. So don't be shy with that part. And then really press it into place and hold it until that glue sets up. Because the more of that glue you add, the longer it'll take to cool and become solid. So just give it a little pressure and it will solidify and hold that spider in place. So that is all for my Vintage Halloween holiday decor created for authentic papers using the Twilight collection and some fabulous chipboards from Gypsy Soul Laser Cuts and trims from Really Reasonable Ribbon. If you enjoyed this video for day seven, make sure you come back for day eight and the rest of the series. We have lots more fabulous projects planned for you. In the links you'll find our socials as well as the links to authentic paper for this collection. If you enjoyed this video make sure you give me a like, leave me a comment, and if you're not already I would love for you to subscribe. As always I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!